Elliot Paul Busatil named as lead suspect in Ormi murder. PN's youngest MP answers if she's grateful to Joseph Muscat for getting elected via gender quotas. And Andy Alul and Naomi Kakia named as Labour's new whip and assistant whip. All this and more on Love and Daily. Good evening, Malta and Gozo. Jonathan Chile here, joined by Yannick Potch. We've got the latest updates from a shocking new murder in Ormi, as well as the latest from Malta's political scene. Yannick is here with details on today's top story. Yeah, so uh, Elliot Paul Buzatil has been named as uh, the main suspect in the, in the murder of uh, Mario Farouja. Um, Mario Farouja was found, uh, his, well, his body was found uh, stuffed in the trunk of his car last week. Um, uh, Lava Malta has been told that um, Buzutil is, is currently being investigated along with four other people um, in, in, into this murder. Um, Maria Farouja was discovered uh, dead after having been reported missing uh, about a week earlier. Um, so Elliot Paul Buzutil uh, has a history of, of, of crime. It seems he was charged in, in August 2020 uh, with stabbing a man in Ta'ali. Um, he pleaded not guilty for that, uh, to that and uh, the case is still ongoing. He also has a history of crime, as we said, you know, he's found guilty of drug trafficking and walking uh, around with a knife while on bail uh, back in 2018. Uh, as things stand, the motive for the, for the murder is um, s still unclear. Um, well, uh, it's a developing story. The police uh, investigations are ongoing. But but it's expected that at some point um, someone will be charged uh, over this murder. You know, it's very shocking that this guy, you know, in his past seems to have a fascination with knives, with stabbing, you know, being found in public with knives, um, being charged with actually stabbing someone else, a Bulgarian man, and now, you know, with the body of Farouja found with multiple mm -hmm. stab wounds, you know, some reports at dozens, even up to 40 stab wounds, uh, you know, it seems like the pieces of the puzzle are coming together but as Yannick said this is still a developing story so definitely stay tuned for more updates on this moving on to the second story um uh one of the most, uh, one of the biggest lightning rods I feel from the general <laughs> election is Eve Borjwanello, the um, youngest MP in Malta, the 18-year-old PNMP. Um, she was just here on Love of Malta yesterday to speak to us, kind of after getting elected, um, and how she felt about kind of the way she was elected. Gender quotas, a very controversial mechanism, and do let us know in the comments below what you think of gender quotas. But either way, one of the things that many critics, many people online were saying was like, was saying, listen, Eve, um, you know, you've been very critical of former Prime Minister Joseph Muscat. The man that you know pushed gender quotas in, which is the mechanism that you got elected by. What would you say to Joseph Muscat, you know, about this? What's your reaction to this kind of question? And yesterday, Borjmanov did not mince her words, saying very shortly but sweetly, "I'm not grateful to criminals." Uh, so make that make of that what you will. Obviously. Former Prime Minister Joseph Muscat had to resign in 2019 um, as there was a lot of political fallout over a number of scandals and major questions. You know, if you were going back, you've got everything from e to Panama Papers and so much more, you know, uh, Montenegro as well. So the fact that Borgianello, you know, got elected via a mechanism that he promoted doesn't mean that she's grateful at all to him. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. It doesn't necessarily mean that she needs <laughs> to be. I mean, in a sense, yes, he was his, his part of his government was uh, was um, pushed pushed for this reform to to, to, to actually happen and and. and allowed her to get into parliament but that being said you know there's, there's absolutely no uh, obligation on her part to be grateful to, to the former prime minister uh, she's definitely managed to get people talking about her mm. well it remains to be seen um, how good an mp should be but so far it's for, I, I, I suppose uh, people are people are following um, moving on to our next story uh, again about Parliament. Uh, so the P Parliamentary Secretary for Social Dialogue Andy Alul has been appointed uh, Labour Party's uh, parliamentary group whip while new MP Na Naomi Kakia has been uh, appointed the assist assistant whip. The whip is essentially uh, an MP that is tasked with ensuring that uh, MPs follow the party line, especially when it comes to voting uh, in, in Parliament. Uh, the appointments were made uh, following a meeting of, of the parliamentary group, uh, chaired by Prime Minister Robert Abela. Um, so Andy Alul will, will take on the role of whip from uh, MP Glenn, Glenn Bedingfield, who was um, who had the role since Robert Abela was uh, elected in 2020. Previously, it was uh, MP, now Minister Byron Camilleri. Um, I wasn't aware that assistant uh, whips were <laughs> a thing, but I mean, it seems our, our, our parliament is, is, is big enough now that it, 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 it will require 
uh, <laughs> fair bit of work to keep for all MPs in order. Exactly. A quick reminder that Malta now has the largest parliament in its history. We have about 80 parliamentarians yeah. in it, um, which is much larger than ever before. Obviously, the gender quota mechanism we just mentioned is part of this. 12 female MPs were elected to parliament because of the gender quotas. So I guess now we do need an assistant whip. It'll be interesting to see kind of how Naomi Kaki and Andy Alul approach the role. Um, Naomi is quite a new face. Um, I know she worked with um, Julie Farrucha Portelli on some reforms. And Andy Alul is a lawyer, a bit of a technocrat as well. So let's see how they kind of approach these roles. Moving on to the fourth story. Um, uh, coming from the south of Malta, one of Malta's most notable landmarks, El Mitna Tasharolla, a beautiful windmill in the south of Malta in Zuri, was unfortunately damaged extensively during some strong winds, uh, winds and gusts last month, um, 19th March. Um, the damage was so extensive that now Minister for Public Works and Planning, Stefan Zunzo Atsupardi, has pledged to give 10,000 euros to get the windmill back to its former glory they're going to redesign the mill blades they're going to have some new 30 foot poles as well as some other structural changes um now just if you're not aware this windmill was actually built in 1724 by um grandmaster de valena so you know this is quite an old ancient kind of structure 300 years old it was owned by the order of saint john so this is definitely something that you know if we're protecting Malta's heritage we definitely want to take care of yannick you're from zuri right i am i am it's uh it's for as long as i can remember i i, I know that you know the mitna to be there it's a uh, it's a lovely lovely windmill um was still functional. Uh, in fact, like uh, I, I remember just after it, it, it was it was damaged. Actually, I saw a couple of uh, Facebook posts by people saying, you know, this could have been avoided had the windmill been turned and been okay. set in a certain way that the okay. wind doesn't damage it. So hopefully, now that it's being fixed, to be fair, it, it, this has happened before. I do remember the the, the windmill um, being damaged and it being repaired. Hopefully, that this time around there might be more attention paid to kind of making sure that the next time uh, there's severe wind, we don't end up with the with the damaged windmill. Well, yeah, great that they're, that they're fixing it so quickly <laughs> after it was damaged. Uh, I do genuinely kind of want it back. I, I do miss seeing the, the, the blades there. And, and so, yeah, great. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, on to our, our final story. Uh, the, uh, an international humanitarian mm. organization has, uh, well, that's dedicated to aiding refugees and migrants, has uh, sent a message of solidarity and hope uh, by delivering Easter egg chocolates to uh, re residents of Malta's uh, migrant centres. Uh, so with Issa fast approaching, uh, the organisation Moaz um, said that although it is currently deployed uh, in the Ukraine, uh, it couldn't forget migrants and uh, in, in, in Malta's centres and has therefore donated 250 Easter eggs as well as cereal bars and other cereal products um, to the residents uh, at these centres. You know, the, the organisation said um, it had donated them to all families and unaccompanied uh, uh, minors and basically people residing in the centres, saying, you know, a, sh a show of support and gestures of kindness uh, in such challenging times uh, were very important and always meant a lot uh, to people. You know, it said Easter was a holiday uh, for hope and solidarity and Stan said it hoped that this small gesture would bring some uh, comfort and hope and maybe even a smile to the residents of these uh, centers. Yeah, you know, during these times when there's like war in Ukraine and so many other crises, it's sometimes easy to forget that we actually have, you know, people who have fleeing war and other kind yes. of right. issues coming to Malta to find refuge and um, safety. It's easy to forget that they're there. Um, if you're actually interested in this topic, Love of Malta did a documentary last year called Far From Home, where we actually visited a number of migrant centers, met the men, women, and children living there, hoping for a better future while finding solace in Malta. So definitely check that out. And if you do find it within your means, don't forget to donate, send some stuff over to the migrant centers. They're always appreciative of that. On the topic of food, and before we end today's episode of Love and Daily, do not forget to stay tuned for our big announcement next week, next Wednesday, the 20th of April, 420. We're gonna have some big news on Love and Malta's epic foodie giveaway, where we'll be giving out over 5,000 euros worth of dinners in some of the best restaurants across Malta. You and one other lucky person can dine pretty much for free for a year at some of the best restaurants. If you're interested in this, if you're a foodie like I am, like many of us are here, stay tuned next Wednesday. We're going to have a big update. I think that brings us to the end of today's episode. Remember, tomorrow's a public holiday, Good Friday, so we will not be airing Love and Daily. So from myself, Yannick, and the Love and Malta team, have an Easter full of love. What's up, Love and Malta fam? It is midday, and in true annual April Fool's style, this is not a drill. Turn it up. 
the Love & Malta Epic Foodie Giveaway brought to you by Love & Recommends 2022 is 100% real and set to launch. We will be revealing more details on how you can participate in the coming days. With over 100 restaurants and eateries already geared to tickle your taste buds. That's more than 100 meals worth over 5,000 euros of dinners for two. Stay tuned for instructions on how you and one friend could walk away with one year of eating out at every restaurant that's worth its weight in salt across the island. Keep your eyes peeled, your friends close, and be sure to work up a good appetite. The epic foodie giveaway has just landed. Coming soon. Love and recommends.